The transition from girlhood to womanhood isn't just a physical process as we're often led to believe, it also occurs mentally. Historically, this transition is supposed to be a very tender and beautiful coming of age style romantic Jane Austen story, but unfortunately for a lot of girls in today's society, it hasn't been so beautiful. It's been a very long time since we've had a girl chat here on my channel and since then my life has completely changed. So for today's video, let's do a get ready with me as we do some girl chat. Today's topic is the transition from girl to woman. Rather than just calling it girl chat, I'm thinking of calling it girl in bloom. I think it has a nice ring to it, but let me know your thoughts down below. I'm not really going to talk about the products that I'm using in this video. I will be leaving them down below. Your 20s are supposed to be this beautiful, magical time in your life where you're coming into your own, you're developing your own personality, you're finding your independence, and you're really just kind of being an adult and figuring out how that looks to you, shaping your life in a way that works for yourself. But for both the millennial and Gen Z generations, we have been all but robbed of this experience with, I don't know, recession, the pandemic, the housing crisis, excessive student loans, the, the list goes on and on. And we have not been able to experience adulthood the way that we've been told that we would experience this coming of age time in our lives. The majority of 20 something year olds are still living with our parents. And up until a couple months ago, I was as well. You know, we don't have the luxury of spending our income on frivolous things the way that generations did before. We don't have the luxury of buying our own homes. We don't have the luxury of really anything. And then we're told that we need to start families. And I don't know with what money we're supposed to do that, but apparently we're supposed to. The truth of the matter is that a lot of people are very unhappy with their lives. Not only does this skew our coming of age time, it also skews the coming of age time of our parents because they're transitioning into a, another stage in life where their primary role in life is not being a caregiver, it's getting back to the things that really made themselves happy. But because we have to stay home with no other option, they're not able to spread their wings in the way that they have also been promised to do as well. So everyone is pretty much getting the short end of the stick in this day and age which is really sad and unfortunate. I posted a video not too long ago on TikTok and it was basically talking about how I grew out my nails because I used to bite my nails for about 17 years. And now finally I have really long nails and I keep them healthy and I keep them natural and I don't really apply too many things on top of them. I just like to grow them out. And I talked about that a part of this growing out my nails was a mentality shift where I wanted to look a certain way. I wanted to be a certain person and in order to be that certain person. And I wrote down a list of things that the woman that I wanted to be did. The woman that I wanted to be also had long, healthy nails. They didn't bite their nails. So it missed all of the efforts that, so it admits, admissed, what is that word? Admit, admissed, whatever. <laughs> so amidst all of my efforts to create this new life for myself and this new aesthetic, my nails ended up being a part of the process. And I got a lot of questions regarding how I changed, you know, my mentality, this mental shift in order to become this other person who now is a lot happier than I used to be. And, you know, I took a little bit of time just trying to think about like, well, what exactly did I do and how do I want to share that message? You know, I think that for a lot of people before us, like, it really helps when you have role models and people to look up to and people that you want to emulate, people whose lives that you want to become like. And personally, I got to a point in my life where I looked around and there was no one whose life I wanted. There was no one that was in a successful relationship. There was no one that was happy. There was no one that was, you know, a happy parent. Everyone's always tired and annoyed with their jobs or whatever the case may be. And there was no one who I looked at and was like, I want to be like you. We often look to outside sources to change our lives for us versus focusing on ourselves. My life will be better when I have a better career. My life will be better when my skin is clear. My life will be better when I have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or so and so and so forth. But we fail to realize that all of these changes start with ourselves. And I know that's easier said than done as someone who has gone through it as well you have to change your own mentality before you can start to see different changes appear in your life. I really wanna help people get to that place. For me, I, I was in a very bad state for about five years. I would call it high functioning depression. 
probably. I had a lot of anger pent up inside of me. Anger about my situation, about my circumstance, about student loans, about still having to live home, about the pressure of, you know, having this full-time job and then obviously having this career here on YouTube and on social media. They were very conflicting things. I worked in retail at an interior decorating store for about three or four years when I was in university which I hated because I hated physical labor. <laughs> then I immediately got a job in finance, which was completely different from anything I ever wanted to do in my entire life. I never wanted to have a desk job. I think I could go through letters that I had written myself when I was in the eighth grade saying that I never wanted to work in a cubicle. And here I was in a cubicle. But at the time I felt like I had a big girl job and you know, this was what you were supposed to do. You're supposed to pay your dues and work at a call center. For a while, I felt like I was living the same day over and over and over again. I mean, I literally was living the exact same day because of the hours that I worked, which was until 12 in the morning. I didn't really have any chance to see anybody or go anywhere. I was only surrounded by the handful of people that were my coworkers who ended up turning out to be some of my closest friends to this day. But I felt like I was living the exact same day over and over and over again. And I got sucked into this, you know, world where you have to climb this corporate ladder and be this girl boss or whatever you call it and it feels like you're running on a hamster wheel chasing this fantasy of success that you've been sold to by capitalism and it really made me depressed i ended up having so many health conditions because of the way that i was living my life my relationships were deteriorating my mental health was deteriorating i was getting to my mid-20s i'm 28 years old and i wanted to be married and i wanted to have kids and i wanted to have all these other things but here i was stuck in this situation where it felt like there was nothing i could do what i will say when you're in these types of situations you will start to look at other people like a boyfriend as someone who is a your escape or your friend groups as a piece of escape for you but what you'll notice is that you will start to attract people that are exactly where you are because misery loves company and when you are vibrating on a particular emotional state you're going to attract other people on that same vibrational state so the answer to all of this unhappiness and this dis-ease it isn't putting a band-aid on the issue by filling your life with so many people that you don't have time to worry about your issue it's about actually dealing with the issue and the issue unfortunately is internal not external for a while i was trying to fill the void with parties and boys and friends and drinking and consumption and fill in the blanks but it really didn't get me anywhere and left me even more deteriorated than i actually was i ended up getting into relationships with men who treated me terribly i ended up getting into friend relationships with friends who never actually had my back. When I made the decision that I wanted to become this other version of myself, I had to evaluate the people around me and make sure that they were a part of helping me become a better person. You see, when you make your mind up to become this best version of yourself, the reason why it becomes so difficult is because you have to dismantle the life that already exists. This means your creature comforts. This would include your mindset, so the beliefs that you hold about yourself, about the world around you, your environment, physically where you are, your friends, your relationships, and even, of course, your family. You will have to distance yourself from people that are holding you back because if something is not propelling you forward, it is obviously doing the opposite. And that's hard because sometimes these are the closest people to you. Now, don't get me wrong. I am most definitely a girl's girl. I love women. I think that there are a few things more sacred than the friendship between girls, the bond and the friendship that is there. You know, they say that boys come and go, but your girlfriends are forever. And I would say that that's true up until a point. And when your girlfriends are stopping you from becoming this best version of yourself, when they're telling you that you need to go out to a club at 11 p.m. on a Thursday when you have to get up for work at 6, they're encouraging you to lie to your parents. Or they're telling you to break up with your boyfriend every time you have a simple disagreement. And I'm not talking about something serious like infidelity or mistreatment in a relationship. I'm talking about something really simple like you forgot to send your good morning text. And they're telling you that you should break up with him? That's not your friend. So saying goodbye to those relationships can be quite difficult. But you'll find you have a lot more time in your hands to figure out who you are. Now this type of letting go isn't just with your friends it can also be with your family a lot of people have very not so happy relationships with their parents this 
could be as a result of narcissistic parents who refuse to take responsibility for the actions, the words, the things that they have done to you through childhood at the excuse that they did the best that they could. And while it may be true that at the time they did the best they could with the information they had, understanding the fact that they were probably just as old as you are and we know how difficult it is and we don't really know what we're doing at this age, giving them the grace that they probably didn't know as well. At the same time, now that they are much older, it is also important for them and their own growth to take responsibility for their actions and the actions that they are displaying currently. So it may be distancing yourself from your parents as well. If they're not treating you the way that you should be treating another adult. <laughs> you know, our parents tend to look at us like children because for the majority of our lives, we have been their little girls or their little boys, but Eventually, you come to an age where you need a little bit of that independence. You may be in a situation where you still may live under their roof, but you're 25 and you pay your own bills and you have your own vehicle, you have your own big girl job, and they're still trying to tell you where and when you can go. A lot of people in this generation have strenuous relationships with their parents. It may be letting go of those people and your family members may not like that. They don't like not having control. They don't, they don't like not being able to dictate what's going on in your life. And they don't like having to take responsibility for things that they've done. It may also be getting out of a relationship that's not helping you succeed in any way. All of these things are quite difficult to do because they become the basis of where we hang our identities on. Our identity is the daughter that bends over backwards for everyone in their family. The friend who doesn't really speak up whenever her friends are pushing them to do something they don't want to do. Or the girlfriend who, you know, continues to be loyal and present even when there's multiple cases of infidelity and they're not treating you properly. But that is your identity. That is your ego. That is the identity that you latched yourself onto and you hold very close to your heart. I mean, don't even get me started on identity politics because that's a whole other situation. For me, two months ago, I moved out of my parents' house in Toronto and I now live in Edmonton with my boyfriend. I am currently the happiest I have ever been, the freest I've ever been, and I'm in the healthiest relationship that I've ever been in as well. And I'm sure that a lot of people want to be there as well. They just don't know the steps to getting there. So how do you get here? The answer is a lot simpler than many people make it out to be. So hopefully through this series, I can help at least one person get a little bit closer to where they want to be. First task is getting to know yourself. Yes, you may live in your body, but how much time do you actually spend with yourself? I mean, without distractions, without having to be on the phone with your friends, without having to be around your family, without needing to be in a relationship, how much time do you spend getting to know yourself on a personal level? For most people, probably not very often because when we stop letting distractions come into our mind we can actually think and we evaluate ourselves and it's a scary thing when you sit and evaluate who you are and the person that you've become because you find that maybe you don't like who you are as a person maybe there's things that you do habits that you have that you don't genuinely like but how do you progress if you never confront these parts about yourself that you don't like? I'm a huge anime nerd and I'm getting my boyfriend to watch Naruto with me over again. We just got through this scene that I thought was so, so beautifully done at depicting this. If you guys don't watch anime, just follow me for a second. I'm getting somewhere, don't worry. But there's a scene where the main character, Naruto, confronts his ego. At first he tries to fight that other person. He tries to say that he's not a part of him. He tries to create an otherness between him and that other person. But he soon realizes that this other person is him. It is the identity that we create, whether subconsciously or unconsciously, that becomes the way that we show ourselves to the world. Eventually it becomes the mask that we wear when we meet other people. But he soon realizes that in order to overcome this other version of himself, he has to embrace that person. And this is exactly what I encourage other people to do. Now, it will not be as animated as it is in the anime, but you can do this while meditating or journaling, essentially spending time with yourself. Maybe when you see other people succeed, whether you really want to or not, your first instinct is to be a little jealous, a little bit of like, why did that happen to them and not me? 
where did that jealousy come from or if you find whenever you get into really healthy relationships you kind of push the other person away and you're sabotaging the relationship it could be stemming from a part of you that doesn't believe that you are deserving of a relationship where did that come from when you sit you journal you meditate you will discover these parts of yourselves that you don't like and you will try to fight it and you will try to push yourself away from that person but that person is you. That person was created in order to protect yourself. You have to accept that part of you, accept why they were created, accept how that has shaped the way that you live your life because it's a part of your story. You cannot be who you are at this current moment in time without that person having been there. So it's not about denying that part of you. It's about embracing it as yourself thanking it for being that person that you needed at the time that you needed and also letting that anger go in order for you to get to that next version of yourself. So if this is something that you're currently going through and you're trying to find a way to connect with yourself, allow me, if I may, to give you a little bit of advice, something tangible that you can start with. We're going to make a jar of journal prompts. I have them in a free PDF underneath this video already written out for you. You're going to take these journal prompts and you are going to answer one every day. I'll have the free PDF in the description. That's all I want you to do. It literally takes five minutes. I have mine written out in this little jar of journal prompts. This is an old candle that I cleaned out and put them in here. And so you can cut them out and every day you can take one of them. You just take one a day and you write in your journal. Now, don't worry if you skip a day, it really doesn't matter as long as you're doing it consistently. If you skip one day, don't freak out. So here is our look. It's very simple, very natural. I would say this is like a clean girl, natural glam kind of. But that is the end of the video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your experience. Also, let me know any other topics you would like me to cover on another episode in this series. I would love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and click over here to see some of my previous videos. Remember to stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I'll see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye.